So if you're recording alone, the best thing to do is set up a loop record. And what I would do is I would select the region that I want to uh, loop through when I'm singing. And you hit Command-1 on the numeric keypad. That's going to bring up your little transport window. And you make sure that the loop record is on. And if it's not on, just hit the, the number five on the numeric keypad. If you look right here, you'll see it go toggle back and forth. Command one to get rid of that window. Hit number three on the numeric keypad. Just starts recording. Where's that feeling that gave me breath when I... So after you finished recording or loop recording what you wanted, um, next thing to do is click on the clip right click and go to matching alternatives. What I like to do is expand to new playlists. So now that I've expanded all my takes into their individual playlists, uh, the next thing to do is to go through and find out the best sections of the individual takes and then move them up to the top. And in that way, you create a composite vocal or a vocal comp. First thing I'm going to do is start looping a section and um, see which one is the best take. And if it's the best take, then I'm going to move it to this top track or the vocal comp. So I'm set a little loop. Make sure that the loop play is on. Just hit four on the numeric keypad to toggle between play and loop play. All right, loop play is on. So I'm just going to kind of loop through all these. So that was the best one I thought, so um, all you have to do is highlight that region and then there's a little up arrow right here. You hit that up arrow, it's going to send it up to the top track. And so I'm going to do that for the rest of these takes. The next thing I do is some very subtle elastic audio. It basically tightens up the vocal, puts it more in time. Come over to here. And I choose polyphonic, usually for vocals. And um, so now this track has the Elastic Audio plugin running on it. Next thing we do is create the warp markers over the region or the clips that we want to edit. So I hit Option, I highlight the region that I want. I hit Option 0 on the numeric keypad and I want it on Quantize. Uh, and then you obviously want it on Elastic Audio Events. I leave it on eighth notes typically. And then uh, what I do is I don't want Elastic Audio to move it for me. I just want them to put in the warp markers and then I will move it myself. And so a big question that I had is, well, how the heck am I going to get the warp markers there without Elastic Audio moving the warp markers itself? And so uh, I figured out a way and you just click on randomize and you randomize it 1% and then you set the strength to zero. Now, let's come over to uh, Warp, and I'm going to zoom in on just a little bit here. Okay, so when we zoom in here, we see that Elastic Audio has found all the transients. They've analyzed the clip, and they've uh, set their analyze um, the analysis markers. And so what I'm going to do is I want to put Warp markers on those analysis points. And, but I don't want them to move. So I'm just going to hit apply and you'll see that these analysis markers aren't going to move. They're going to stay right where they are, but they're also going to have warp markers. So there we go. So nothing moved, but I have the warp markers. And now uh, I'm going to change to slip mode by hitting F2. And I'm just going to start making sure that everything is aligned properly. Where's that feeling? 
Where's that feeling? Where's that feeling? Where's that feeling that gave me? Gave me breath. Gave me breath when I. When I. Okay, so I finished doing all the elastic audio. Uh, just subtly moving things, not by too much. Um, you want to make sure that it's not editing the audio that bad. So I'm going to listen back to it in solo. Where's that feeling that gave me breath? And so you'll hear some pops and you're going to want to fix those. Where's that feeling that? Okay. So I'm just going to get rid of the warp markers that are creating those pops. Where's that feeling that gave Where's that feeling that gave? Where's that feeling that? Where's that feeling that gave? Where's that feeling that gave? Okay, so as you see, I've had to delete all of these now. One thing that you can do is when you're setting these up, um, before you move one, find the warp marker right next to it and then move this one because then you're only affecting this. You're only affecting this one and you're not affecting anything else over here. So if we play this back. Where's that feeling that gave me? Okay, so that's, that's good. Where's that feeling that gave so we want Gave to be uh, on time. So let's move it back a little bit. Where's that feeling that gave me breath when I... And then we all, I also want that on. So let's see. Where's that feeling that gave me breath when I... So I'll, now there's no more pops. So I got the artifacts out of the track. Now I'm going to just auto-tune. The way that I like to auto-tune is I set up one track. Uh, this track right here, I call it Evo, uh, auto-tune Evo. And I have auto-tune set up on the track already. And so what I do is I just move this clip up, which is going to bounce all those edits. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to change the name of this track down here to lift. Lift is uh, just means it's the lift section. It's the pre-chorus. Lift ELA, E-L-A for elastic audio. And then I'm going to create a new um, playlist, and I'm going to call it Lift Evo. And so that's going to be where I'm going to return the auto-tuned track. And so I'm going to open up Auto-Tune. Now, same thing with Elastic Audio. I don't like Elastic Audio doing the editing for me. I just like them helping me set it up. Same thing with Auto-Tune. There's two different modes in Auto-Tune. You have the Auto uh, mode, and then you have the Graphical mode. I always go to the Graphical mode because I like to surgically um, edit everything. I'm down here, and you hit Track Pitch. Now you could do track pitch and time for some reason. Autotune's giving me a hard time with um, the time correction. So I just use the pitch correction. And then you just hit play. Okay. So that's it. Let's figure out why we can't hear anything. So this track right here, Lift Evo, was soloed. Uh, turn off all solos by holding on Option and clicking Solo. Or if you want to turn off the uh, solo of an individual track and the track is selected, just hit Shift S and it'll turn off solo. All right, first thing I do now is I highlight everything. I hit the number seven. 
Um, I come down here and I click make notes and I leave the number of note objects at 50 and then I change the retune speed down to about 24. I make sure that the formant is enabled because when you change the pitch either up or down you're going to either sound like the devil when you go down or you're going to sound like a chipmunk when you go up and adjusting the throat length will help uh, minimize those autotune artifacts. All right, so now I just start editing. I just move things to the pitch. Where's that be Where? All right, and then I hit number four to change to this tool. All right, move that guy up. Where's that beat? Where's that beat? And that gave me breath when I laid my hand out. Lay Let's move this over a little bit. This guy needs to be made a note, so I'm gonna highlight him, come down to um, make notes, um, and then turn up the make note. There we go. And then as you turn this up, it's gonna give you these guys to work with. And I only need one of them. And I think that's supposed to be a B. So we're just gonna make that guy a note. All right, let's check what we've done so far. Where's that feeling that gave me breath when I laid my head? Okay, this guy sounds real fake. So let's uh, shorten him and set the retune speed back a little bit. And since we've raised him in pitch, um, that means that we want to lengthen the throat to make the sound deeper. So I'm gonna come down to throat length adjust and just bring it up one. That Same thing with this guy, bring him up one. This guy was brought down, so I'm gonna bring him down one. Where's that feeling that gave me breath when I laid my hand out in your palm? Oh, 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 okay, so this note's totally off. Uh, we see that it is a G sharp, and G sharp is not in the C major scale. Oh, but, but I'm going to bring him down on his own and change the throat length. Uh, we brought him down, so we want to shorten the throat length. Okay. So let's see how everything sounds. All right, that sounds pretty good. All right, so now that the auto-tune is done, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bounce it to the Lift Evo track. It's supposed to be a mono bus. So let's come to our mono buses and use 133. So let's come to the bus and we want 133. I'll record enable that track because we're gonna be bringing in audio and just hit three to record. Where's that All right, cool. The next thing I have to do is make up for the latency of auto-tune. So if you could see the auto-tune, the track on auto-tune, um, when we bounce it, is going to have a little bit of a delay. Now I have to correct that. So the way I correct it is I put the cursor here, I hit tab, and it'll tap to this transient and then I hit uh, A to get rid of everything before that transient. Then I come up to this track and I hit tab and that's gonna move the cursor to the exact same transient. So now basically what I wanna do is line this track up exactly to where the cursor is. And the way that I do that is I come back down to this track, I hold down control and I click. And that's gonna move the beginning of this region right to where that cursor was and so now, now these tracks are perfectly lined up delete this track because we already have that track saved on um, lift ELA and that's about it that's that's the preparation that I do before I start mixing the vocals so that's vocal editing now I just go and I start adding EQ Add some compression, add some reverb. As far as editing, that's basically what I do.